This whole Area 77 business is getting pretty intense. Doc and Scar have taken my time machine and hidden it away for everyone's safety. I can't take on this task alone. I'm gonna need some help. And there's only really one person that I can think of that will answer the call against the man. Now all we need is a way to call him. <laughs> Quiet out here in hyperspace, man. I wonder if there's anything on the radio. Got any of the songs to sing along to or something, man? Jumpin' Jiminy, that's the song of the intergalactic hippie horn, man. Looks like one of our brothers out there is in trouble. We need to crank this sucker up to 1.21 gigawatts. There's a fellow hippie in need, man. Hang tight, brother. Rainbow's on the way, man. Brother Green, you called me in? Well, it looks like we got ourselves a new ally in the search for the time machine in the man himself, Ren Dog. Well, actually, it's it's he's called Ren Bob and he's totally Ren and I, I don't really know what's going on, but he is a hippie man himself. So I thought we could start like a little commune here. So we got my little van and Ren's van there. And together we can start an anti-government area that one day will break in to Area 77. But we've got a long way to go before we can get there. Because while we've got two RVs here and a giant nuclear reactor type thing on the back of this van, there's still a lot to do. We need some funds, we need some infrastructure, and one of the things that I definitely want to do for this area is actually make it worthwhile. As in, I want to make some farms, and I want to make some laboratories, etc. For example, in my van, which incidentally is not decorated at all yet, down here, I really want to make a little storage room. Now, if I'm going to be making some flowers and making some organic farms, I really ought to dress the part, don't you think? So I'll change out from my usual skin and try a little bit of flower power. This is so cute. Look, I got some like beads on. I've got a little flower in my hair. I've got like a headband under there. I wonder what it looks like if I take my hair off actually. Yeah, I got a headband. <laughs> I got a headband. It's not weird green eyebrows. This is an actual headband. It goes all the way around my head. It's got some flowers on it. Absolutely perfect. So I'm ready for this journey. I think have I, I've even got some sandals on. This is awesome. Okay, so now that we've sorted that out, I'm actually going to make this area here my little storage room, but I have actually got a huge amount of things that need to be done in this episode. And not all of them are the hippie area around here. So I'm probably going to leave a little note for Ren Bob telling him what he should be uh, working on around here because I've I've got to go and do uh, my, my mini game which is over there somewhere and I've actually got to go and make Sahara now this episode because I've been yeah I've been slacking on that there we go I've left him a little bit of an instruction because I've summoned him using my amazing Woodstock hippie music hippie horn and he has arrived but I'm pretty sure he has no idea why he's actually here so I've written this out for him hey Ren Thanks for joining this commune. We are here because the man doesn't want us here. They are hiding things from us and hid my time machine. If you want to help, we need to build up this area and make it livable and prepare for the raiding of the man's house from G-Man. So yeah, we've obviously got like a nice start here, but we need to build this up. So while I'm working on my other projects, I'm really hoping that Ren will pick this up as a little bit of a project. So, let's head over to my minigame, which is the giant mansion. Now, there's actually quite a lot to do here. If you don't know what this is, yet last episode, I started making this giant mansion, and this is basically the floor is lava. Now, what I'm going to do is kind of separate this out into different rooms, and each room will have tokens that you can collect as you run around. 
the tokens will directly, kind of like an arcade where you can buy toys and stuff with your tokens, they will convert into prizes. So this nicely separates it all out into three different rooms. Now, obviously there's going to be lava on the floor here. Now that's the last thing that's going to be added. Now I think what I'm going to do is actually just make the first floor or the bottom floor here, the ground floor, because I think this is gonna take a lot longer than I anticipate. Now there's actually gonna be quite a lot of redstone involved in this, which is slightly scaring me. I may actually ask Iskal for a little bit of help trying to get all the dispensers to work properly. But we'll see, we'll see. If I can manage, then that would be great. But knowing me and knowing my my redstone prowess, I can't see this going down particularly well. I'm making some pretty good progress here. I've managed to separate it into three rooms. I've added the first floor, so you can definitely see how this is going to pan out. I've even added some things which you're going to have to parkour to. Now, one thing about this house is that you're gonna have to take some risks if you want some reward. One of the big parts of this game is the fact that there will be hidden areas. For example, you can see that I've built one here. This area might be hidden by a painting, and if you're here, you can't see in, so you might jump in and end up jumping straight in the lava, but it's more likely that a token is going to dispense over here, so it might be worth taking the risk. And as I said in my other episode, I am going to make like a graveyard section, but it's going to go down into a crypt, which I think I'm going to make around here somewhere. So as you can see, this mini game is pretty big in size and it's going to be kind of intricate. Like I'm going to need lots of different bits of furniture here and I'm going to need to make sure that I make all these different hiding spots. It's going to be pretty intense, I think. So what I'm going to do is actually just finish off this room so you guys understand the principles and how this game is going to work. And then I'm probably going to have to finish a lot of this off camera because it, there's quite a lot of work that needs to go into this. So being able to put furniture everywhere is a big reason why I didn't add lots of windows. If I had loads of windows, all of these little secret pockets wouldn't be as easy to do. So for example, I could put a painting here <laughs> I, t I totally forgot that I still have this resource pack on. Oh, man. <laughs> so I could just put some normal paintings up and, like, they could go in. There might not always be a gap. Like, for this one, you can kind of see in there. But if I run in and I take the leap, I could just hit the wall flat. Whoa, is that just invisible? There's no back to these, so you can see out of it. That's weird. But anyway, there might be like a token here for you to jump down. But at the same time, imagine that there was no signs there at all. I'd just hit the wall and go straight into the lava. It'd be a nightmare. So you've sometimes got to take the risk and just hope that it's an invisible painting. Fake wall. And of course, you can just mess up like I just did. Hit my head on that. And then you go here, collect your token, and then you work out. Now, the more you explore the mansion, of course the more you know where all the good spots are. So the more you play, the more reward you get. So it will look a lot like this. You press the button, boing, and then all of these letters appear and you're like, ah, okay, so I'm gonna go and collect the tokens. How do I get up there? I can't jump like this. Maybe I've got to activate the trap door and then I can jump up, no problem. Ah, is there something behind here? Ooh, yes, there is. Oh, I forgot to put lava here. Got another token. Oh. See, now this is an easy level. There's not a lot that you can mess up on here, but it's totally possible. So, run around here. Now, is there something here? Oh, you know, I may, I messed up. I hit my head. Maybe I'll try again. Okay, there is. There's totally a way in here. I get I get the paper, and then yada, yada, yada. Yada, 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 yada. Let's take this lava away before I kill myself in it. I don't really want to die to lava today. So let's take all that back. But yeah, that's a really good demonstration of what this game is going to look like in the long run. So I'm going to leave this for now and I'm going to work on this in the background. And I'm definitely going to leave this resource pack on because this is just hilarious. I totally forgot about this. And I got to say, the whole thing looks the part. When this is all done, this is going to be a very exciting mini game to play. While we're here, we should check the diamond situation and dig straight down. Has anyone been playing? Yes, they have. I don't know if they won or not, but that's not my concern. There we go. Added some diamonds to the pot. And has anyone been buying some more golden carrots? No.
But either way, we need to head over to Sahara because I actually am required to make the additional extension to the Sahara building. Why am I crawling? What the heck? What's go- Whoa. Do you, you guys see this, right? What the heck is going on? That was- No, wait, it's still going. It's still happening. It's still- What the heck? I'm flying, but I'm not flying. Whoa. I can't walk. I can't- Literally- <laughs> I've asked Scar to come and take a look, because what is going on? Look, I just, I can't, if I jump, I'm still flying. Look, Scar, can he even see me? <laughs> help! Scar! Scar, help me! Wait, does he see what I see? He's just... He doesn't see me flying. On Scar's screen, I'm just standing there. So what does he see when I do this? What does he see? Because look at this, I'm bouncing up and down and taking damage. What's going on? <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> what kind of witchcraft is this? Dude, I don't know what's going on. I'm like a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if I use rockets, nothing happens. This man needs to be put in Area 77. I'm like, I think client side, I'm flying. Server side, I'm not. This is, I can't actually stop this. Oh, there we go. Fixed. Fixed. I'm back to normal. As you were, Scar. As you were. <laughs> that was really, really weird. Where were we going? I've totally, I've totally been utterly distracted. I'm pretty sure we were going through the portal. Oh, we're going, we're going, to, we're going to the old lands. We're going to the old lands. We will be keeping an eye on you, Flower Hat Man. <laughs> They're gonna want to put me in area, every area 77 for that. They seem to be collecting anything weird or Minecraft breaking on the server. So any mystery, they're gonna be collecting it which we might be able to use to our advantage later down the line. Right, so we're heading back over to Sahara, which apparently is broken a few more times. As amazing as Sahara is, it's not really, it's not really delivering as expected. But don't worry, this is such an enormous project and it's so redstone intensely complicated. Like no one has made anything like this in Minecraft before. This is a first, okay? But because of that, because of how unique it is and how complicated it is, it's it's a wonderful Minecraft project. But at the same time, it's it's obviously going to have some teething problems. But what we want to do is add a new thing called Sahara Now, which is a brand new subscription, which will give you really, really good deals. And as I can see here, Iskal has actually marked out the area that he wants me to build in. My goodness, this is quite a big extension. Hmm. And it goes straight in here. Well, let's plop down all our chests. Hopefully I've got enough resources for something this big. I've got myself loads of white concrete powder if I run out. We got, we got, we got enough to be getting on with. So, let's start this little time lapse on what we're going to do with Sahara now. I have no idea what I'm actually going to build here. I have absolutely no clue. I'm probably just going to wing this build. Don't have a lot of time. So, let's get on with it. Now, winging a build is not as easy as you might think. It takes quite a lot of time to plan out something like Sahara, so I took a big, big gamble by just throwing myself in there. I didn't count my resources, I, d I didn't do anything, I did not plan at all. I just had a vague idea that I was going to make a tower, and I was just going to use the same blocks that Sahara has. And I quickly realised I didn't have enough resources, 
and I had no idea what I was doing. So I kind of went for my fallback when I do this kind of style, which is like this question mark. You can see it kind of goes straight at the top, down, and then looks like it's gonna go right to the bottom. And then I add some wooden. I basically just went with a bit of a cop out for this design. And then I realized that it was imbalanced. So I tried to do the same thing on the other side. And actually it came out pretty good, I think. I added the words now at the top, obviously, because this project is called Sahara Now. The idea is that you can cycle through once you've bought a subscription and check out all of the shulker box deals. So you might end up with a shulker box full of sand, beacons, everything, and it might only cost you a few diamonds. At least, that's the idea. So this is why I needed to make this particular build. It might look a little bit unfinished, but I've actually messaged Iskow and Mumbo just to say that Sahara Now building is pretty much done, but they might need to fill in a hole in the roof, because unfortunately I have run out of resources. This took so much, and I need to say a massive, massive thank you to Scar. I ran out of about all of my resources halfway through this project. Like, it did not take long for all of my resources to be gone. I spent thousands of terracotta, <laughs> I've, uh, I've unfortunately, I'll, I'll admit it in a bit, but when I finish this, I'll show you something. But I've, I've spent an awful lot of resources trying to get this finished. And yeah, I really don't want Iskal to know how I went about that. But Scar came in and saved me. He knows how horrible it can be to run out of resources on a project like this, especially if you're time-lapsing it. So I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to Scar, who uh, lent me some resources, and I'll be sure to pay him back. But you know what? That looks pretty awesome, if you ask me. I really think that that looks cool. It Obviously, there's a hole in the roof, but other than that, I think it stands out. I think it fits in, and I think it complements the build there as well. So hopefully there's more than enough space for Iskal to work with. If there isn't, I'm definitely not remaking that. He he, he can extend that further if he needs to, but he showed me the, the, the device, I guess, that's going to go in there, and it's definitely not bigger than that, so it should be fine. Overall, I think I've been, I am to be commended on this build. It, it absolutely fits in, and I haven't built anything on Sahara for quite some time. So, overall, A+, plus, I think. But unfortunately, during the construction, I ran out of terracotta so badly. Oh, do you know how... This is a whole lot of terracotta owned by Concorp. Do you know how much this hurts me? That's... That's like... Oh, that's like 50 diamonds. I had to spend 50 diamonds to get enough terracotta to build Sahara, so I may have got stonks by trading that glass back and forth, but at the end, they won. <laughs> Looks like Mumbo still hasn't got his moustache back. He sure doesn't love turning up to meetings. I actually want to check on how the profits are doing for Sahara, because I think we've made a few sales, at least quite a few sales more than there were. Oh, there's white concrete here. Oh, I could actually possibly finish the roof. This might just be enough. Doesn't look like the pile's gotten any bigger, unfortunately. Sahara's not been a financial success, that's for sure, but branding is on point. Let's finish off this roof right here because, yeah, this is a bit of an eyesore. But at least my part in the Sahara Now project is pretty much complete. I make the buildings, then they fill it with all the contraptions that kind of don't work. I'm kidding, they most they mostly work. <laughs> There's lots of improvements we were talking about for Sahara. One of them is making this ice, which we're still planning on doing to speed up Sahara. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a work in progress. A project like this is so complicated, it really does take a while to know the best way to do it. And bearing in mind this has never really been done in Minecraft before, there's definitely probably better ways of, of doing the way, the things that we've done. Hey, you know what? I actually completed it. I, after that time lapse, I was like, no, I'm definitely not going to manage to pull this off. But nope, did it. There's no interior, but I'm not going to be in charge of that, I don't think. Because I'm pretty happy with how that stands. Oh, I didn't mob proof it. That looks, you know what this looks like? Ladies and gentlemen of the Green Channel, that looks like an Iskow problem, because I'm out. <laughs> We've got more pressing matters to deal with over in Hermitland <laughs> in trying to get back my time machine. But we've done our chores for today, and I'm afraid that really is all I have time for today. 
I've really, really been working quite hard. I've made three videos in one day because I'm going away for a while. Actually, I'm on holiday right now. It's actually my birthday today when recording this. Obviously, it's uh, birthday gone past now. So, happy birthday to me for like five days ago. But I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone for watching. It's been really awesome. And a massive thank you to Ren, who spent hours with me before my trip making that introduction that you saw at the beginning of the at the beginning of the video. If you really like that sort of thing, Ren does that all the time in his videos. He has like these little skits and they're really really fun. So, go and check out his channel. I will leave a link in the description. And thank you very much for watching. There's more Ren Bob and Green shenanigans to come. <laughs> Thanks again for watching and good bye. Huh. I'm underwater. <laughs>